unto you today, how excellent is your name in all the earth, Jehovah God, the creator and the God and father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light and by your word, by your spirit that dwells within us, we are developing, we have been born of the spirit of God and we are growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given unto us as we come together to study your word. I thank you for the lifeline of your word that you've granted to us, that by way of your word we can develop and we can grow. And your will will be done. The earth will be filled with your glory as you have so declared. And you have made us a part of this. And for that we are grateful, we are thankful that you have placed us where we are. And so we just gather here today honoring you, giving thanks unto the great plan of salvation that you have provided for us and placed us in. Bless your name, Father. Glory and honor, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto you forever and forever. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated if you will. Praise God. Good morning to everyone. And good morning to our viewing audience. Thank God for you and for your commitment to the ministry. Thank God for your ongoing support that you have provided and that you are providing for us as we labor together to get the job done. Father has given us and invited us in to be a part of the process. This is a very special calling. I, I don't know how you take it, but I take it very seriously. Uh, to be a part of the family of God in the earth. Uh, our creator, Jehovah, God, the creator, the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, being a part of his family. He is our father. I love how Jesus introduced us when he was raised from the dead. And he said, he said, go uh, tell my brethren that I ascend to my father and your father. Wow. That is such an honor to call him Father. Yeah, amen. And, and, and that's real. That, that's not some hype. Hype is one thing, but this is real. And, and our lives rest in Christ, in him. That's our connection. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He, he paid that price that got us back inside. Boy, that's good. I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Well, let's go ahead and get into the Word. Uh, we have been on the subject of Holy Spirit, looking at the ministry and work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there is no end to that, I can assure you. Uh, but I tell you, it has just been wonderful what Father has been teaching us as we have been zeroing in on this and focusing in on, on, on this particular, on the subject of Holy Spirit. He is God. He is, he is uh, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, God the Father. Jehovah God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, Holy Spirit, our Teacher, that's present in the earth now, living in us. We are born of the Spirit of God. There has been a connection between the Creator and us. Wow. Wow. We are his creation. He is the creator. And we were separated from him, but now we have been reconnected with him. That's true. Don't, don't let nobody take that from you. And, and so we have the word of God, and as we receive the word of God, then we actually develop into what he has designed us to be, the creator. And so uh, looking at the ministry and work of the Holy Spirit, 
He is Jehovah in the earth. He is God in the earth. Jesus came and purchased our salvation. He went away and then he sent Holy Spirit to teach us. In the uh, 14th chapter of John's gospel, the 16th verse, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. That's the truth. And in the 16th chapter of the same gospel of John, the 13th verse, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. And so the, the ministry of Holy Spirit is we are born of the Spirit. You got to know that. You get born again. Jesus taught us over in the third chapter of the Gospel of John that you must be what? Born again. Um, and that has to be. We, we, how do we get more? Well, we hear the gospel and we believe in the name of the Son of Jehovah, God Almighty. We believe on the name of Jesus and then we are born again. Oh, I wouldn't worry so much about trying to figure that out. It's the way he said it and it happens. You are now, you know, you, you are, look at the way you are now. Well, you know you weren't always that way. You know that. How do you get from where you were to where you are? Well, people think, well, you know, I just changed. No, you didn't. You can't just change. If you think you can just change, go ahead and find somebody that have not gotten born again and see if they changed. <laughs> you follow me? You follow me? No, no, you, you were not. Now you are. And, and what happened was, that supernatural transformation that took place on the inside of you as a result of you believing on Jesus made the great change. We are born of the Spirit. That's the first work the Holy Spirit does within us is that we are born of the Spirit. Jesus taught it all in, in, in the third chapter. He said that which is born of the flesh is what? flesh, that's which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we are born, we are now spirit beings. We are spirit beings and we are eternal beings. We will, la we will live forever. You have done all the dying that you will do. You, will, you, 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 you die to the flesh, but, but you will live forever because you are, you are, you are a new creature. Via, for, for, First, Second Corinthians says, "If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation." That's what I am. That's why you're not the same as you used to be. That was the old you, and now this is the new you. That's real, and so you are a new creature, and you will live forever. And the more, the longer you live, the more you're going to learn about you. See, so you're a spirit being, but you don't know much about you. As we grow, Father will continue to teach us who we really are. And as we understand, the more, if you notice, the more we learn about who we are, the more liberty enters in. You ever notice that? We become more and more like him. We are like him. And, and that's, that's made very clear throughout the scripture. But the one that works this in us is Holy Spirit, and that's why we're t t talking about him, Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. Now, we have to be, co we have to be uh, uh, cognizant of the, uh, aware of the fact, and, and let, see, let the word, don't, don't just think about these things, but allow Father's words to develop in us and to cause us to be uh, who we are and what we're supposed to be. Uh, in the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians, or do you not know that your body is the what? 
temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is where? In you. One of the things, as we, as we continue to grow, don't try to figure out who you are in your value by how you feel or what you even think. But know who you are by what Father has says we are. In other words, I am what the Word says. Now, as we grow, let us develop that because Holy Spirit is teaching us and he will teach you, he will teach you out of the word. See, he will teach you from the word. The Holy Spirit will never tell you something that the word does not agree with. See, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Jesus is called the what? Word of God. And so Holy Spirit is the teacher he will guide us. The scripture says, uh, we just read, he will guide us into all truth. But what, what is the truth that he will guide you into? He will show you what the scripture says. What, 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 no, notice what it says. In 1426, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. What are the things that Jesus said to us? Right here in your hand. So you will, there will never be a discrepancy between Holy Spirit and what Jesus says. There will never be a discrepancy. It is, now know that. You've got to know that. So whatever the Word says, that's what Holy Spirit will teach you. He will use the Scriptures to teach you. He will teach you what the Word says. He will guide you into the truth of God is the Word of God. Remember what Jesus, remember, remember Pilate asked, what is truth? Remember what Jesus said? Thy word, the word is truth. The word of God, this is truth. The word of God. So Holy Spirit will always, he will, he will never say anything that the word doesn't say. He will not lead you into any other direction other than what the word said. And that's why we can always stay on track. That's why you have, you know, we, we, we <coughs> We like, you know, we like, you know, I just had this hunch. Well, that's all right if you agree with the word. <laughs> but if you had no scripture for it, I wouldn't mess with it. Well, you know, I just, you know, you know, you know how you, we've all been there. I felt, I, well, I, and I, you ever hear people, well, I just feel like this is the way. Just let the hand go up. How you feel about it don't mean a thing. Has, does the word of God agree with it? And this is why you, this is why we have to always to trust and depend upon Holy Spirit. He is He will guide us into all truth. So I say that to keep the, because that's what help keeps us on track. Because if you start fooling around and asking about how you feel and all, start living by what you dreamed last night and all that, you can get in some serious trouble. You know, I just I saw Grandma last night. Came to me in a dream. I would leave grandma where she is and stay, stay with the word. I would do that. I really would. I really would. You know, but uh, this, this, I'm telling you, you've heard people like her on like this. You, you, you hear this kind of stuff, you know. Stick with the word. You can't go wrong because Holy Spirit and the word will always be in agreement. And so you know who you are. So as, as I was showing you that in 1 Corinthians uh, 19, Verse 619, or do you not know that your body is the what? Temple of the Holy Spirit. So if it's the temple of the Holy Spirit, then he lives inside of you. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit who is where? In you, whom you have from God and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify Jehovah, glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are right. You don't, but you're, not your, you're not your own. You've been bought with the blood of Christ, and therefore we are not our own. We, we are not, we are not. Our, so we know that's the truth because that's what the what? Scripture says. 
And so he'll guide us into all truth. Now, as, as, as we live from day to day, that is exactly what he does. So let's talk about the practicality of our growth and our development. In Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 5, it says, Let this mind be in you which was also where? In Christ Jesus. Now, everybody knows that there's nothing wrong with Jesus. Now, who had the problem? We had one. So God said, here's, here's, how I want, here's how I'm going to fix this. What I want you to do is I want you to conform your life to the life of Jesus. Whatever you see Jesus, you know, we can mimic. You know, we know how to mimic. You know, it's in, in, our, in the world, that's all we do is mimic. Somebody come out with a, some, some new, some hairstyle, and everybody fix their hair that way. Somebody put on a pair of pants, and everybody want a pair like that. You know, somebody put on a hat. Everybody want one of those hats. You, you follow me? You know, somebody go get the, get the nails cut, trimmed, and painted. Everybody, well, I want that. We are mimickers. You know, now, Father says to us, Holy Spirit says to us, he says, okay, Ben, you want to just mimic, and you like to do that, how about, how about just mimicking Jesus? Amen. See what I mean? Now, Holy Spirit will help you. To, he's going to show you how to do that. He's going to help you mimic Jesus. Because after all, when, look at the world itself. This world itself is not a good, it's, 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 you know, we, we, we want good, right? We want good. So when we get born again, we get introduced into a new kingdom. We're born again. We are, we're introduced to a new kingdom. And, and, and we are coming out of this darkness. World, this world is a, is, ah. Yeah, we don't, this is, we, we know see something better than this. If you notice, oh, we're always trying to do better. And that's right, and you should. Because coming out of sin, growing, we're growing out of that into life. You get born again, that's the first big step. That's the first big step in, in, in growing is getting born again. There is no life. We found out that there is no real life apart from Jesus Christ. There is no real life. Now, now, men are still trying to do that. They are trying to have a good life in this world without Jesus. And they are just failing terribly. And, you know, they just keep trying. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know it's, it was a better last time. It's going to be a better time. It's going to be a bad next week. You know. So, but, but, but that's, that's this mindset of the human mind. We keep trying to do things and trying to raise the bar and trying to live a quality life apart from Jesus Christ. So once we acknowledge that there is no such thing as a good life without Christ, then we believe on him and then God can, we, he, we're born again and then we start to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you start to excel. That's what this is all about. But Holy Spirit is the one that works in us to bring that to pass. And we want that's what we want to just keep focusing on and put our trust and confidence in him. You need a tutor. If we didn't need a tutor then God would not have given us one. He is what he is a he is our helper. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another what? Helper, you need a tutor because you don't. You're moving into a new territory and you don't know where you're going. And so, Holy Spirit is here to guide us into all truth, and He will take the things that Jesus has said unto us, and He will explain them to us and minister to us so that we can excel and grow. Now, notice what the Scripture says: He is our what helper. He helps you to do that. And so Philippians 2, 5 says, for this mind, let this mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now notice the language that he uses here. He says, he doesn't require us to initiate something. If you notice, if you notice the, the, the language that's spoken here in this Philippians 2, 5, he says, let or permit or allow. So that's, that's something that's, that wants to take place, 
but you can hinder it. You know, like somebody that knock on the door. They want to come in, but you won't open the door. You need to let them in or invite them in. Remember, what, remember Jesus said that. He said over there in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and if anyone hear my voice, I'll come in and sup with them. If you invite me in, I'll come in. But you have to allow it. You have to allow this to happen. Now, this is a very good, this is a very special principle here that we need to get. So listen to this. Holy Spirit's trying to, he's trying to help us. He says, he says, let this mind or allow the mind of Christ, allow, allow the mind of Christ to dwell in you, to be in you. Let this mind be where in you. Which mind? The mind that was in Christ Jesus or the mind that is in Christ Jesus. Let his mind be in you. So if you let his mind be in you, then you'll start to think like he thinks and you'll start to act like he acts. Now, if you notice something here in the, in the work of the Holy Spirit, there is, is in, in the whole growth process, it's not a struggle. I don't know, what, well, I know where we got it from. We got it from the devil. This struggling business is something we come up, we got from the devil. You ask any good Christian, they're, they be, they're huffing, puffing, ha, they're having a tough time. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because you don't know any better. But there's never a time for you, to, uh, you and I to be struggling or, or huffing and puffing. The way the doors has been, the, 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 the life, life has been set before us. God said, I set before you life. Choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Let this mind be in you. The mind of Christ is available unto you. But you have to allow it to be in you. He's not going to just bust in. He, he's not, he didn't set it up that way. Because if he just broke into your life and took over, he would have to break into everybody's life and take over. Because he is no what respect to persons. Understand this principle. You have to allow. That's why we're always encouraging people, you know what I mean, to, to, to come to church, to come to Bible class, to do, what, to, to do the things that's going to do, do for, 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 for growth. It's going to promote growth in you. We encourage them to do that because you're the one that has to do that. You're the one that's going to have to allow that. God didn't say, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come over there and I'm going to make every one of y'all go to church and I'm going to make every one of y'all sit down and read the Bible and I'm going to make every one of y'all pray. No, he didn't do that. He said, what I, what I want you to do, I'm setting this before you. I'm setting this life before you, but you have to choose it. Allow. Holy Spirit, his ministry is to assist us in the process. You're not left to get your lesson by yourself. You have a, have a private tutor, and he lives on the inside of you to guide you into what? All truth. So he said, let this mind be in you. And I, the more I do this, it, it, oh, my goodness, it's just become so easy. Now, here is one of the things that I found out that, that, that messes us up. If you notice, if you notice, we humans have a microwave mentality. You know what a microwave mentality is? You want it yesterday. We, you know, we, we don't have time. Everybody's in a hurry. We don't have time. But that's not the way the kingdom works. Even the new birth, you, I bet you don't even know when you got born again. Oh, you might tell me you felt a little goosey one day, but that doesn't mean that that's when you got born again. You can go smoke some pot and feel goosey. You understand what we're talking about? We're talking about a real change that takes place within you. It is a mist. The new birth is a mystery. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit that makes that brings us into the kingdom of God. And and here's I'm I'm, I'm helping. I'm trying to help us. Holy Spirit is trying to help us. He says, guys, you your ideas, your mind is your worst enemy. Because you have a mindset 
of everything just being every we I mean we 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 just we are we are speedy. I, we, we we just want everything already. We we don't have time to wait. We don't have time, and we have created a culture that way. We we don't even have time to go into our kitchens and prepare a meal. And that's something you do every day. But but I'm just speaking in general now. What we have designed, everything is designed. I mean, we got minute oatmeal. <laughs> we don't have time to cook it. So we designed it. Well, just pour some hot water over, bless God, hook it up and go on and throw it down the hatch. Everything is, you know, you know, that, you know those, that, that says something to us. That speaks to us. It tells us, you know, we don't, we don't have time. We, we don't have time. But I'm telling you, when it comes to the kingdom, you are either going to take time or you won't get it. The things of God is not hurry up and got it right now. I know we we want it. You know, you say, we, you know, can you pray for me? I'm a little, I'm a little slow. And you can you and you pray, and and before you finish praying, you're feeling to see if you got it. No, you just relax, relax. God's word is true. If He said it, it's going to be. But you're going to have to just wait patiently on Him. It's, it's this, now, if you now, I'm going to show you some things because this is very important. Anything that's instant is not lasting. If it's instant, it's not last, lasting. I mean, you go out, say, you go out in your front yard, and you see a weed that came up last night. Don't worry about it; it'll be it'll be gone by fall, by the nightfall. You know, it, it just you know things that that are that are lasting is time consuming. It takes time consuming. You take, I always like to use the illustration of the oak tree. The oak, it takes time for it to, but watch the, once, the, once it, it may take 20 years for the thing to grow up. But I tell you what, there ain't no wind gonna come and blow it over. It's your anchored boy. Everything is blown away, that tree's still standing there. Why? It's anchored. It took, took time. And when you, allow the time for Holy Spirit to work in you and to guide you, you're going to be so solid devil won't they don't even want to know your address. They, they don't want to know where you live because they ain't no need going over there because they know they're going to get bashed. Why? Because you are solid. You are solid. You are solid. You know, why? Because you, you, have, you have weathered the storm. You have stood strong. You have allowed patience to have its perfect works and you come forth like pure gold Amen. understand that that's just, that's something we're going we're going to have to learn we got to we have to learn that victory is not like that Amen. we have to be patient and allow patience to have its perfect works and so when he said let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus you're going to have to make a decision to do that and then allow it to happen. You've got to allow, allow, allow it to happen. There's a scripture over in our John's gospel in the 17th chapter of, of John. John 17. Let's look at the last verse of this text here, of the chapter, the 26th verse. Of John 17 and I was, I was reading this and meditating and I thought dear Lord this that's that's you know I when I look at the Word of God and Holy Spirit is the one that helps me to do this I, I, I listen to what the father what father is saying this is his word Jesus is the word and I listen see, see you got to listen listen Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing. That's important. Your ears are vitally important to you. Hearing, which you can, you can hear the wrong thing, you know. I, I've known people to do that. They, they hear the wrong thing, and they react. They act, they react. So when you hear the wrong thing, you're acting the wrong way. 
and you get bad results. But you got to hear the right thing. Listen, listen, listen twice, act once. Don't, don't, don't. Because if you listen once and act twice, then, then you're gonna, you may have to act twice because you miss it. Now listen to what he says here. The 26th verse, and I have declared to them your name. This is the prayer of Jesus. Now listen to this. This is, this is Jesus. Has, he, has, he has done the work that the Father sent him here to do. And he is, this is what we call the, a, the high priestly prayer of Jesus. That th this is the prayer that he prays prior to his arrest to be crucified. He has come into the earth. He has lived on the earth. He has done what the Father has sent him here to do. And he has accomplished all things. And now he has come up before the Father and presenting himself to the Father in that he has finished what he came on earth to do and ready to move forward into the last stages of his earthly ministry. And, and, but but, but here's, the, here's what's so absolutely amazing. His focus here is on us. Now, you, can, you, can, you, you just can grasp from that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, and, and I, I'm, I'm learning this because this verse here is working in my life right now as we speak. As you develop and grow, I'm telling you, you're going to change. The power in this word will change you. It will change you into something that you will like. But you have to allow it to happen. You have to allow it to happen. When Jesus said, he said, let this mind be in you, that's exactly what he's doing. The mind of Christ here, he has done his work, he has done all the work, and he has put up with all of the mess that he had to put up with, with people. And he is before the Father preparing for his exit out of the earth. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horror. But here's what I want you to see. His concern is for us. Now, allowing this mind to be in you that's in Christ, that's what Philippians says, is to be concerned about others. Because I can assure you something about your Heavenly Father. When you begin to allow others to have your best interests, your heavenly father will certainly take care of every possible thing that you can desire. That's the mind of Christ. That is the mind of Christ. When you have others' best interests at heart, I'm, I'm telling you, that people, that, that, that's something you need, to, you need to tag that. That is the mind of Christ. Jesus here in this in this prayer here that he is praying is constantly for others. It's for us. It's for us. It's for us. You got to know the love that the Father has for you. You got to know that there is a love. Don't, why would, don't stop beating yourself up. Stop doing that. The Father don't like that. He don't beat you up. He honors you and he loves you because of Jesus. And Jesus settled that before he left the earth. He settled your and my destiny. You got to get that. And the mind that was operating in him was, is the mind that you and I should be desiring to take on because that's a mind of victory. And when you make others your priority in reference to what you're called, then I'm telling you, you will be God's priority. Notice he said, humble yourselves under the what? Mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. When you humble yourself, he will exalt you. That's a principle. Be, get, oh, purubaka. This is exactly the mind of Christ is to think of others. Think of others. Think of others. 
Now look at what he says here. <clears throat> and I have declared to them your name and will declare it that or so that the love, now listen to what he said, so that the love with which you loved me. Now think about what he said. The love, he said, Father, the same love that you loved me with. I'm praying that this love will be in them. Do you see that? Do you, do you, do you hear that? The love that the Father loved Jesus with, Jesus is asking the Father to put that in you. And did you know he has done that? But watch this. You and I have to develop and grow in that. He didn't just open you up and drop a ton of love inside of you. That's not the way he did it. You have to grow in that. Do, let me ask you this. Did the Father hear Jesus' prayer? Jesus asked the Father to put the love in us that was in him. Now, come on. God so loved the world. Think about this. That he gave. He loved the world that he gave. That's how much, that, that's the love that the Father has. Jesus is asking the Father to put that love in us. Do you think he did it? He absolutely has. That's what the new birth is. When you got born again, that love was put inside of you. You became a new creature, and that love has to grow, has to develop and grow in you. It, it's growing in you right now as we speak. See, when a baby is conceived in the womb, it starts to grow. But you don't even see the little thing. But it's growing. It's growing. It's growing. And then when it's born, it's just a little handful there. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a full-grown adult. But it doesn't look like it. But what happens when you feed it for 20 years? See, see, I'm trying to show you something. The father answered Jesus' prayer. And the same love that the father has placed that was in the father, he has placed it in you. But you and I have to let it grow. He said it in Philippians. He said, let this mind be in you. Let it, allow it, allow me to develop you. Wow. See, you are doing that right now as we speak by attending to his word. See, right now, that's, that, this is conducive to that love growing in you. And it just keeps developing. Now, here's what happens. An idea audible. Share. Alakanda borosta kalaha. It when you get enough of that inside of you for you to start seeing it, when you begin to sense how you feel about people, when you can begin to sense your concern with people, when you begin to sense how the compassion that you have for people, when you begin to sense the care that you have for people, boy, it's growing. It's and it's going to keep on growing because it is the same love that the Father loved Jesus with. Do you, do you see that? The, isn't that right there? Is right now working in you, developing you, conforming you to the very image of Jesus. The day is coming. When you will be looked so much like Jesus that nobody will, they, they, they won't, nobody will be able to tell, tell, tell who, they won't know who is who. Wow. That's where you are. That's, that's your present position. You are positioned. So what we are saying, he said, you let this happen. Let this mind be in you. Well, listen, if the same mind 
And the same mode of operation is in me that's in Jesus. There is no difference in us. Now, let's rewind. Let's go back in the same text here and let's look at what he is praying. And you'll see it is that there's exactly what he's praying. Now, let's rewind back to the 20th, 20th verse. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Well, as you develop and have the mind of Christ, your words is going to be the words of Jesus to go out and bring people into the kingdom. Don't you see that? What is it? That they all may be how many? How many is one? Ain't but one. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be what? One in us. Do you see the goal of the Father? The Father's goal is for the day to come and you don't see but one. Whoo! Glory to God. Glory to our Heavenly Father. That we be what? One. How is that going to happen as we grow in this? We conform. We are growing. We are growing. We are developing. It's like uh, the process of a, I mean, come on. You, do you know what all goes on inside of a, inside of a mother? Many of you know what have experienced this, but you know what's going on down there. You know, baby growing inside, you don't know what's going on. All those intricate parts are being formed. Them little arms and legs and liver and gizzards and heart and lungs and all of that is being strategically formed inside of you. Who is the architect of that? Good God Almighty. This is the same God, the God and Father of Jesus Christ, Jehovah, the Creator, that is conforming me now into the image of Jesus Christ. Wow. He is turning me from hate to love, from selfishness to kindness, from unforgiveness to forgiveness. He is all that's just like just like those, you know, that, that baby that's formed in your womb is, is just being, oh God, how do you do how do you do that? And then the day comes when that child is born and every organ has been perfectly formed. And it comes out. It don't even need you to breathe. You, it's jump-started. When it, as soon as it hit this earth atmosphere, there's a jump-start. <laughs> wow. How, how, what is the mystery of that? You see the mystery in that? Now, now, the, now that which is born of the Spirit is the same kind of mystery. That's why Jesus said, Marvel not, don't worry about it. It's a mystery. Just like you ever, you ever said about that, trying to figure out how is this baby being formed in my mind? You all know, just go to sleep. Marvel not. How do I get born again? What do you mean? I just go to sleep. Do, do you see the contrast here? In having the mind of Christ, allowing the hand of God, the, the hand of Jehovah to create you, in you, Jesus Christ. Wow. Allowing the mind of Christ, taking Christ's mind and putting it in you by way of development and growth. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this oneness, this oneness, this oneness is something that, that, that grows and develops. It, it grows, it grows, and we have to allow it to grow. 
We have to allow, we have to allow that love, the love that the Father loved Jesus with, we're going to have to allow that love to grow in us. And we, when, we, when we do that, it's going to be exactly the way it says it was going to be. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians chapter four. Let's take a look at this. Let's look at the process. See, this is, this is real stuff. This is where you are. Let's look at the process. Let's look at the process of allowing the mind of Christ to be in you. Everybody in here want the mind of Christ to be inside of them, right? Let's look at the process. <laughs> now, if the mind of Christ be in you, then the same works that Christ did, you're going to have to do the same thing, right? It's, 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 stay with me now. Stay with me. No, don't, don't stop pulling away because we're gonna get, it's going to get a little deep. I'll tell you that right now. It's going to get a little deeper. If you have the mind of Christ, then you do what Christ did. And he's, but Jesus actually said to himself, he said the works that I do, so you, you're going to do them also. He said that. That's, that. that's not just for you to read and quote. It's going to develop. Now watch this. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as or the same way that God in Christ forgave you. The creator, Jehovah God, forgave you, in fact, made a statement to say, I won't remember your sins anymore. As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgression from you. He tells us when we get born again, after we are born again, he said, now I want you to go do to others the same thing that I've done for you. Well, we, said, we, 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 was, we were shouting when we said, let this mind be in you that's in Christ. Well, yeah, we want that. Oh, let's let the work, same works be in us, all right? Are you, still with, are you still with me? Don't stop pulling back on me now. And be kind to one another. Watch this. This is your everyday operation. I go out every day, and I purpose to be kind. I won't be cruel. I refuse to be cruel. I refuse to be snobbish. I refuse to be short with people because I have a directive. And Holy Spirit is inside of me to help me along the way. See, don't forget that. You were never sent to be kind by yourself. Did you know that? that's the truth? See, see, this is what I, this is what we have failed, and this is why people do stupid stuff and make excuses for it. They say, "Well, ain't nobody perfect." Well, you just mean. That, 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 there's no there's no sense of Holy Spirit being present in that person because they won't they won't allow themselves. They're not they're not letting the mind of Christ be in them. They're more interested in in having their own way than they are conforming to the image of Jesus. Which is an indication that maybe you didn't even get born again yet. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't say you weren't. Notice that I didn't say you weren't. That's just a good indication. People carry on like that. But when you said, he said, let them, see, you, you, you come into the family and that allow Holy Spirit to conform you to the image of Jesus. He will help you to do that. And it requires, I'll be honest, it requires some disciplining within you. Because you got some, that flesh you got is mean, it's rough. You ought to know you've been had a thing all your life. It, it's no good. But it dwells no good. So allow that. So allow that. And so see, this is a this is a practical everyday exercise and be kind to one another because that's exactly 
what Jesus does. He is kind. And he, you just, we just said, let this mind be in you. So if you allow the mind of Christ to be in me, then I'm kind. So you just don't, don't just allow it. Don't, you're not going to just be mean and no consciousness of being mean. If you just be, the Holy Spirit will say, hey, you mean, you know. He'll tell you. And you're going to have to quit that. See. But, but, but don't get off the boat. Just regroup. And, 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 and because this, you're in a growth process. This is a growth thing. He is, not, he is not bashing you because he never did that. I mean, the most vile person, Jesus didn't bash people. Just because they was all twisted up, that didn't bother him. He just helped you get out of it. I mean, he dealt with many people that was, that was brought to him, and these people's these people lives was a mess. He just stroked them and told them, okay, quit that. Well, you and I are going to have to do the same thing. Now, watch this. He didn't just say be kind. He said be kind to one another. He said be tenderhearted. You know what being tenderhearted is? Gentle with people. Caring. Having their interests at heart. Tenderhearted. And here's the one, forgiving. Now, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Now, we'll receive this. We'll receive this. We say, "Oh yeah, okay, I'll forgive." I'll forgive. Because see, our thinking is, our thinking is, that he is just talking about when somebody do something to you. This goes a little bit further than that. Stay with me. I don't lose me. I don't lose me. He said, "Be kind to one another." Okay, I'll be kind. Be tenderhearted. Okay, I'll work on that. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Well, how did God forgive you? He forgave you, period. He didn't just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to forgive you for stepping for crossing the street. See, that's, that's what we think this is. We think, well, you, I'm, I'm going to forgive you. You, you, know, you. you stepped on my foot, so I forgive you. That's, that, that, we, that's what goes a little bit further than that. How did, all we got to do is just say, well, how did God forgive me? Can I, I, I'd rather read it to you. Can I read it to you? All right, let me read it to you. You, will, you, you can see it better when I read it to you. This, this is good stuff here. Hebrews chapter number eight. I'm just going to read the 12th verse. This is how God forgave us. This is the new covenant. Are we still, are we in a new covenant? Okay. This is how God forgave us. Because he said, what did he tell you? Do the same to others as I, what I did for you. Now I'm going to show you something here. Just going to ask you, this is, this is phenomenal. How did God, because I, I'm, let me read it again. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. There's a standard. He set a standard. The way he forgave you is the standard. Whoa, boy. Watch this. How, does, how did God forgive me? I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read the 12th verse of Hebrews 8. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Bam. You see, I, listen, I didn't write this. I'm just reading the scriptures to you. He said, I want you to forgive others the same way that I forgave you. When you came to Jesus, when you came to God, he just wiped the slate clean. When you call on the name of Jesus, what did he do with your slate? He wiped it. He didn't say, well, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I got to see about this deal here because this is here's a little something here. I don't know about this. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, we ain't, we're going to end no, 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 no. He swept the thing clean. I know he swept it clean because I, I, I'm reading it to you. I'm reading it to you. This, are you living in the New Testament? Uh, this is the new covenant we're living under? All right. 
For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember it no more. God said he won't even remember them anymore. So he can't, so he can't, so he can't hold a grudge. He don't even know. He don't remember it. He said, I want you to do the same thing for others. Now watch this. Turn, over to, turn back to John's gospel. Whew. It's coming together. It's coming together. It's coming together. John 20. Let's read from the 19th verse. You get, the, you get the gist of this. Jesus set this in motion for us. He, this is what he did. This is the way he operated. He set it in motion for us. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the door was shut, this is after Jesus had been raised from the dead, when the door was shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be with you. Verse 20. When he had said this, he, showered, he showed them his hands and his feet. Side. That's the evidence of the sin being paid. He showed them. So, that, so there's no need to be pulling back. There's no need to be pulling back from what I'm about to tell you. Because I have qualified you to do what I'm going to tell you to do. Please get this, children. Because, see, see, listen, if we don't grow, we, we got to grow, we got to go past what we knew. Because that's what growing is, going somewhere you've never been. He says, I have qualified you. He showed them his hands. What is his, his hands and his side is an indication of his, of the payment for his, for their sins, right? That's the payment. Sin wasn't swept under the rug. It was paid for in full. He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad. I guess they were. Dear God, he didn't pay the price, paid that thing. When they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, peace to you. From now on, there's peace. There's peace should be working in you right now. Because I know it's so because Jesus spoke it on me. Peace to you. That's to me too. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. The same way that the Father sent me, I'm sending you. The same way that the Father sent me, I'm sending you. In other words, whatever you saw me do, I want you to go do the same thing. Are you still with me? Don't, don't, don't run on me. Don't run out the back door. You want, this mind, you want the mind of Christ, don't you? Well, you got to do the same thing he did. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. There is the promise. There is the promise. There is the promise. There is the promise. So now Holy Spirit goes in there and they become new creatures in Christ, right? When he says, receive you the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit goes in there and then now they're born of the Spirit. And what is the first thing he says to them to do? Verse 23. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And that problem, we have a problem with that one, boy. We, 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 that's why we put the brakes on. You know what we do? I'm going to tell you exactly what we do. We do, we, we do the same thing that was done to Jesus over in the second chapter of Mark's gospel. Listen to this. Follow me. Follow me now. Look at in Mark chapter 2 and look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Wow. That crowd got mad as a wet chicken. Some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sin but God? Are you still here?
But immediately when Jesus perceived in their spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about, about, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go into your house. Go in your house. As the Father sent me, that's the way I'm sending you. So you can't draw back from John 20 anymore. You can't draw back from that anymore. I know this, I know this is true. I know, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know I could do that. Well, he told you all that in Ephesians 4, 16, 4, 4, 4, 34 to do it. 432 to do it. He told you to do it. He said, who's, he said, he said, forgiving one another. He didn't what he tell him. Forgiving one another as the Father has what forgiven you. Didn't he say to do that? So why do why are we having such a problem with that? Let's, let's shut it down this way. How do you alleviate friction? By forgiving. If you've got turmoil anywhere and all of a sudden just go in and make everybody shut up and forgive everybody. There will be a not, there will be a no more argument. I'm telling you, I'm trying to move us to another level of understanding. The way that you alleviate friction is by forgiving. Okay, let's fast forward. Let's say it this way. If every human being on the earth right now stop and say. I forgive all. I hold nothing against anybody. Every jail door would fling open. Every court would be adjourned. It would be heaven on earth. Why? Because there is no friction at all. We are one because nobody holds anything against anybody. Do you understand the kingdom of God? You know a home where there is perfect peace? is a home where everybody's always forgiven. The husband never argued with the wife because he's, always, he's already forgiven her before she does anything. The wife is going to argue with the husband because she's already forgiven him, really forgiven him. She's, he's really forgiven her. He's really forgiven. Everybody is, everybody is forgiven. Everybody is forgiven. There is no friction, and that is the title of the kind of home that God has designed. That's why he said, this, for this cause shall a man leave his mother and his father, shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. How do two people become one? They forgive one another up front. It's a done deal. You can't do anything to, to rile my fellow. Because before you do it, I, see, God didn't wait. See, the way he said, you forgive the way I forgave. God didn't wait for you to do something. He forgave you up front, so there's never no so, so you can't do nothing. Because you're already forgiven. I know this is I know I know you I know you think, oh God, he's always in the Harrison world. No, this is this is the word of God. That's how you become one. Peace. You know what peace is? Peace is what it says. Peace. It's freedom from all distress. There's no friction. No friction. Oneness is zero friction. Now you, go back, now you can go back and reread the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. Now you find out what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about one, being one. Did you know whatever the Father says, the Son says it? Whatever the Son says, Holy Spirit says it? Whatever each, each said, you, you, cannot, you cannot build one against the other. And Jesus said, I'm praying that they be one as you are and me and I and you, and they'd they be one the same way. Do you, do you get a hold of that? Can you get a hold of that? God, that they be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Thus, I, they, I want them to be the one just like you and I are one. The Father said, see, oh, God. When God created the man, that's the way he created them. He didn't create the man separated from him. When Before God, sin came into the garden, Adam was one with God. 
Who, who, who named the animals? Was it a, who, God didn't. Well, what did God call a rabbit? He calls a rabbit a rabbit. God calls a dog a dog. Well, what do you call a dog? You didn't name no. Adam named it. What if Adam called it? I call it a I, I call him a dog. Do, do, you, do you see that? Can you see that? The separation didn't come until Adam goofed. God came into the garden and talked to Adam. He said, I'm hid. I hid myself. What are you doing hiding? He said, I was naked. Who told you that? You're no longer one. We're not in agreement no more. No, no, do, do you see the one? Do you see what? Do you see what God is calling us to do? <coughs> Forgiving. When you forgive people, I, I don't tell. See, that's why. Don't you come to me and tell me nothing. Nobody did, because I, I don't hear you. Because I have forgiven them before you tell me. So you can't come to me and get my ear to help you talk about somebody else. You can't do that to me. Because I look at you and, and tell you I forgave them and I forgive you for telling me. I say, oh, no, 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 really. People, this is what I'm telling you. This is how you get, this how you, this is the mind of Christ. They brought that woman in adultery to Jesus and told Jesus, telling Jesus about, it. he said, she's called an adultery. Well, don't, well, forgive her. If you can, I forgive her. So she's not. I'm, she's fine with me. Do, do you see? Do you see the mind? Do you see where we're going? Do you see where we are? Do you see the kingdom of God here? The kingdom. Listen, you do, you and you are not required to pack a grudge against anybody. Amen. You are not required to do that. I have the mind of Christ. Suppose I, I, listen. Jesus. She said. Jesus said. Where are your Where are your accusers? I don't have, they, they're gone. He said, well, I don't accuse you either. D do you see that? Neither do I. This is Jesus. Neither do I. Now, then he said, now, now, now we just, the scripture says, now, I want you to have the mind of Christ. D you need to develop so don't let, don't ever, don't let people come to you and tell you nothing about nobody. See, that's, <laughs> when we got something really juicy, boy, we want to tell. <laughs> well, you're going to have to find you another subject because I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to forgive. I've already forgiven them, and I've already forgiven you for telling me. So I'm free from this because I have the mind of Christ. He said, neither do I. Now, I know we, I know we, we, we yeah, but you, and we all that, yes. Whenever you get a yes, but, you know you got some unbelief coming. Yes, but. Yes, but. Put your hands up. No. There's no buts. Forgiving one another as God and Christ have forgiven you. People, this is, now listen, listen. This is not a lesson just to say we had a Wednesday morning Bible class. Go ahead, stand to your feet. But this is a lesson for us to practice. This is where we are. People, this is where we are. This is, this is, this is. The word of God is supposed to change us. When we are the counsel of our Father, we are to say yes and amen. When he said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ, you have to do that. You get an agreement with it. And, and follow through with it. You, have, you and I, we have to do that. See, the, to, to, to hear the word of God and just walk away and forget what manner of man we are, that's no good. But when we look into the perfect law of liberty, we must continue therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This one will be blessed. So I purpose in my heart to let this mind be in me that's in Christ. Let it. Holy Spirit is working in me to make that bring, help to bring that to pass. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And you will be forgiven. You will forgive others the same way that he has forgiven you. 
Did God forgive you? Then who are you to hold it against anybody else? Because you know what? And I'm, I'm going to just take the cover right off this thing. <laughs> if you want to charge somebody with something, what you are saying is they are worse than I was. Because you don't want God to come and charge you with nothing. But, you, but yet you want to complain about what somebody else did. So what you're really saying is, yeah, I want, I, I want God to forgive me. Yeah, don't no, 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 no recharge me with it. But, I, but, you, but you don't know what she really did. I don't care. Don't, don't you see, do, you see, do, you see, do you see the reality of this? We got to be, it's forgiving. Forgiving is what's going to fill the earth with God's glory. Because forgiving alleviates all friction. And forgiving causes us to be one. That's what Jesus prayed. Father, we're so honored to be a part of your family. Oh, Jesus, our Lord, thank you for the life that you lived before us and the pattern that you laid before us how you taught us how to love one another, to be kind to one another, forgiving one another the same as we were forgiven. And so, Father, we thank you today that you have opened up our understanding. Thank you for a ministry of the Holy Spirit that's working in us to bring change, to bring maturity unto the body of Christ. Oh, we bless you today, Father. We honor the name of Jehovah God creator of all things. Blessings and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God. God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and forever. Amen. Praise God. Well, go in peace.